I know that listeners are like, oh my God, that's so many things that you're having other people do. But the thing is, you might be thinking that now if you don't have a lot of clients. If you have a lot of clients, it becomes more and more necessary to have all of these other little pieces integrated into a system that other than your shoulders. Because if you have one, fuck yeah, you can do all of the things. But if you have 10, you just can't. Welcome to the Agent Goldmine, the only podcast in the world specifically for real estate agents who are stuck at five transactions a year to help them get to 20 plus. Your hosts, Ali Garced and Shelby Johnson, two EXP icon agents, each do over 40 transactions a year and interview others who are crushing it. In this podcast, you'll receive the knowledge to help you scale your business using systems and processes with our interviews and monologues twice a week. If you want to be a part of our community, reach out. Welcome to the show. Ali, how was your birthday? Happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday, you old lady. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is 34. My knees don't hurt as they did last year, but that's because I didn't dance this year. <laughs> Dude, check it out. So my birthday always falls during Pride, like no matter what city it is. So it's Minneapolis Pride. We go out on Saturday night going into Sunday, and Sunday was my birthday. And in fucking, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, they have coat check in the summer there is a literal coat check and i was cold a coat check in june 30th oh like, my god wild i cannot believe what it's the so fuck? weird living out here is so weird that is so um, weird and you you went out out you went dancing and things yeah no 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 i mean us either you know but it was surprisingly it was actually majority i would say majority of the people there were probably in their mid thirties, which was pretty cool. Damn, the old person's club. Yeah, it was. But I'm like, how are all of you dancing? You know, like it was actually at the same music venue where we just saw Taking Back Sunday. Oh, um, so that looks so cool. It, yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. But then we realized that there's like a whole separate section that's like a sit down in the lounge area, and I was like, this is our fucking jam. We were out here in the middle of the, you know, <laughs> where you're like, can I have some earplugs, please? <laughs> they literally are giving out earplugs out there. Okay, I love this place. <laughs> this sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was good. Yesterday, my birthday, we just I had to go bathing suit shopping because we're at we're going to Puerto Rico soon. We're going on a cruise in a couple of days. Ran some errands, got a pedicure, got a massage, <sighs> and then had dinner up upstairs with one of my neighbors. It was awesome. That sounds great. And you still did not get a present from me, did you? No, I didn't. But I also didn't check the mail today. Okay, fuck you. I'm like on the edge of my seat, ready for you to receive my gift and have this lovely reaction and all the things. And, you know, it's really more about me. I really want the words of affirmation. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. As soon as I receive it, I will give you the words of affirmation. I wonder, because I know that you sent it a while ago, so I wonder where. I did. I I should probably check on it. I should do my own fucking due diligence. But instead, I'm just like, did you get it yet? I'm excited to receive it, whatever it may be. Thank you. I love you. Okay. I love you. Is that what you just said? Tell me you said yes. I love you. Yeah. I was about to be like, say that. And I was just like, love you. Oh, okay. This is fine. We're here. We are here today to talk about part two. Is this email two? This is part two. What are we doing today, Allie? We're doing both. Yes. So I'm going to break this down email by email. So yesterday was, or yesterday, the last episode was like email one and two, being that I don't have a one refresher. This is a series on the buyer checklist step-by-step and I'm giving this shit away. So if you want this buyer checklist, the template of my email the actual uh, PDF checklist so that way you can implement this into your business. Fucking hit hit us up, Allie the Agent, The Shelby Show. We're here for it. So today's going to be email number three, which is Ooh. getting ready to draft the offer. Perfect. Wait, did I miss it? We oh, because there is no email one. That's right. There is no email one. There is just email two, and now we are on number three. So if you have only heard one episode before this, you are in the right place. I am also in the right place to hear about. The next step, which is email three. Okay, I'm ready. I'm caught up. Awesome. Yeah. So, okay. Yep. Last last episode, it was bringing the buyer, setting the expectation, you know, doing all the things in case you have trouble setting an expectation and your buyers are having, like sending you uh, properties at midnight and the texting, hey, can we see this tomorrow? Review the last episode. 
because I go over the expectations, ask me for these fucking emails, ask me for the PDFs, ask me for the attachments. Like I literally, I, I don't have that in my business. And if as soon as someone tries, I say no. And I say it in a Shut friendly way. So that way I'm not that person. Like I actually almost prefer working with buyers just because I have it down so pat. Okay. This, this today's episode is buyer email number three. And it's all about drafting the offer. So after you have shown your buyers one, two, hopefully not more than like 15 properties, they're ready to place an offer and you're like, fuck yeah, let's go. So this is going to be a combination of me sharing my screen and showing you what's actually in the email as well as my Trello checklist, where if you are interested in this fucking Trello checklist, again, reach out to us, Ali the agent, the Shelby show. We're here for it. And let's get this started. Let me get myself situated. While she gets situated, just a reminder that if you're not watching on YouTube, you don't have to be. You can still follow along if you're podcasting in the car. It's all good. But if you really want to get that visual to go along with the auditory, you know, capitalize on all of the modes of learning, then hop on over to YouTube, the Agent Goldmine, and check out what Allie is about to share on her screen. Amazing. Let's share. So in a matter of one second, I pulled up this email because we use superhuman. And if you also want superhuman to save your freaking life. (laughs) Best ever. Yeah. (laughs) We are affiliates. Okay. Buyer email number three. This email, uh, again, like I always do with every single can email for my buyers, for my sellers, I started off with a bomb bomb. It's a video that explains what the video, what the email is. Because otherwise, as soon as you see an email with like a shit ton of text, like you're just like, you know what, let me let me pause this. Let me let me open this shit on another day when I have more time. So that's the last thing I want. And in in almost every one of my bomb bomb videos, I pretty much explain you can read the email side by side. This is just overlapping information in case you'd rather see me than read, which is a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to fucking read. I just uh, I swear by this bomb bomb, man. I love it. And this is a templated email video. It's not personalized. So I'm not saying, oh my gosh, Shelby, congratulations. We found the property for you. We're going to be placing an offer on 123 Lexington, Lexington Street. I'm saying, woohoo, we found, a, we found a property that we want to place an offer on. This is exactly what I need from you. Read the, the email below, fill in the blanks. And I just tell them the process. And this process specifically, what I do is I have, I copied and pasted exactly what my TC needs in order to submit an offer. So. She's pretty much who the one who wrote buyer email number three, not me. Um, you know, I'm like, I want to make it as easy as possible. Laura, what's everything that you need? Okay, perfect. And I made it into a box, you know, like fill in the blank. Here we go. And I, once again, I am submitting, attaching my video of the purchase contract overview. I have already submitted this in email number two. So this should not be the first time that the buyers are seeing a contract. Again, I want them to see the contract as early as possible. So in that way, when we're actually placing an offer, they don't get freaked out. Now they see something formal. Yeah. Yeah. Shit their pants. (laughs) Or like, yeah, get cold feet because no, 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 we don't do that. Or you can, but just with somebody else. Yeah. (laughs) I will not be your agent. Okay. So that's what the bomb bomb is. It's a one minute video. It's just like, hey, like pumping them up, like. We, you have been wanting to purchase a property. This is it. You know, this is now where we're going to make shit formal. So congratulations, fill out the information below, send it back to me, reply all, and we will submit it to the listing agent. So that's what the bomb bomb is. Again, then my templated email that I already have is an unlisted video of the overview of the contract. Shelby, you have, I have a, question? a question. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you may get to this in a second, but you know, I'm just a fucking impatient human. At what point do you talk to them about the offer, like a recommended purchase price or what's normal in regard to earnest money, like the terms and all of that stuff? Or is it just like here, fill in the blank. Good luck. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 
399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Great question. So in my videos that are attached in the PDF, I kind of set the set the pace as far as what the markets. And I do still have those older videos of freaking 2022, I think, because the market is still a little bit hot. It's definitely still a seller's market. So I'm never le like leaving, leading my clients to believe that it's a buyer's market until it is, you know, but it's, it's not. So I'm going to be like, we're going to, chances are we're, we're competing against other offers. So this is how to make our offer stand out. And I do tell my buyers, because this is on my Trello checklist, which again, I have the whole checklist too. If you want it, reach out, Allie the agent. In there, there's a specific blurb that says, is this like your 10 out of 10 property? Is this the property? And if so, how bad will it hurt if someone else placed an offer that was two, three, five, ten thousand 10,000 above and they got the property, not you? Because if it doesn't hurt that bad, then totally cool. We don't have to make the highest offer. But I just want you to know like how bad is it going to feel? Because chances are, especially as we're reaching out to these listing agents and seeing are there other offers on the property already, that's where we're going to gauge and come in at different... That's where we're going to strategize. So with this email, overall, we have already strategized. We kind of know on a level one through 10, where does it fall? We're not even going to place an offer if it's not anything lower than a seven. And I tell them, I'm like, I don't even want to show you a house if it's less than a seven, because why are we wasting our time? We should only be showing you houses that are actually like considered to potentially place an offer on. So it's all in the client expectation. So that way this, they know we've kind of spoken about the property. At this point, we've gone inside the property already. We've kind of toured the neighborhood. They have toured the neighborhood. They've looked up the, the crime stats. They've looked up the child predator shit, like literally all their due diligence they have done. And now they're 100% set on this property. And it kind of depends on how, you know, how strong we go, if they have other offers, if they are, if they have an open house still coming up, do we want to scoop this up to the point where they close down their open house later on? Shit like that. So did that answer your question, Shelby? Yes, it did. Thank you so much, Allie. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay. <laughs> so as I'm scrolling down here, it's a lot of just I mean, very, very obvious fill in the blank, full legal buyer names because Richie is a nickname, you know, I don't know. Katie is a nickname. So, and sometimes this, this has actually surprised me when they come back with their full legal name. I'm like, oh my God, your name is that. Anyway, obviously you need their new, their legal name, phone number and emails, address, the purchase price. We have spoken about the purchase price over the phone or in person or over Zoom, we've already spoken about like kind of how to game this so that we can get our offer accepted. Earnest money, I have in quotes here, like, or sorry, parentheses, non-refundable, because in Arizona, that is not the case. Nobody sends non-refundable earnest money. In Arizona, so many of the, the buyers get their earnest money back pretty much like whenever the hell they want, even after due diligence. It is so buyer-friendly. So to get our offer accepted, fucking throw in 500 bucks of non-refundable earnest money that no matter what the seller will keep. And that just, it shows way more good faith money than just this bogus $3,000 or 1% yeah. you know, earnest money that doesn't do shit for the seller. That's like in information you didn't ask for. In North Carolina, <laughs> they have <laughs> due diligence money alongside earnest. So due diligence is non-refundable. And it's, you know, especially when the market's hot, it was super normal to have fucking direct, like huge, junky due diligence, non-refundable, and then no earnest money. But then coming to Kentucky, it's, it's only earnest money. So I'm right with you. I'm like, okay, well, the first thing that we're going to do if we're representing a buyer is help them see the benefits to submitting some sort of non-refundable because holy shit, it's way more powerful to the seller. And flip side on the seller side, I do feel like it kind of sucks. Like people are like, oh, you know, in Kentucky, they're like, again, you don't care. I'm going to fucking tell you anyway. They're like, oh, why yeah, would you yeah. ever have like non-refundable? I'm like, dude, the seller is literally taking their home off the market and putting so much faith 
into this buyer with absolutely no repercussions if that buyer just wakes up the next day and decides, nope, I don't fucking want it. Now the seller has to go back on the market and suddenly it's, oh, they're back on the market. What's wrong with it? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's really fucking unfair, honestly. 100%. Oh my God. No, big time, big time, big time. When I sold Britt's house, the house that we used to live in, that's exactly what happened. We accepted an offer after having a lot of traction. We accepted an offer. And then this bitch, all of a sudden, the next, mm. the next day no. was like, actually, mm. I, I do want a garage after all. That is not the fucking time. <laughs> so literally that real estate agent I wrote, I will never work with them. Yeah. You know, like I will I, always explain to my clients exactly how it was working with that listing agent, especially if I'm representing a seller. So like what you have burned so much right. by doing that. And you burn the seller because, again, like you said, property goes back on the market after one, like two days, you know, yeah. what the fuck is that? What's what wrong happened? with it? Clearly yeah. something happened. Seller's and it's just fault like, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And the seller isn't able to do anything. So yeah. if you're in a state where like, where this is the case, I'm always asking for non-refundable. And if I receive an offer as a listing agent. Same. I yeah, I'm like, can it. we make this money hard? Day Rep. one, oh. no matter what. If you hard buy the property, wrong. cool, it's yours. Yeah, but otherwise, if you back out, even during the due diligence, we're keeping your earnest money, even if it's a portion, something. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from other agents that obviously don't play that way. And they're like, oh my God, no. I'm like, okay, cool. Then we'll just move on to a more yeah. serious offer. Totally. So mm. oh, yeah, do not even get me started. I know. Okay, okay. We're bringing it back <laughs> in. That was totally my fault. Sorry, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's, what, what is next? What are we doing? So next is a little, so this, the rest of, I guess the, the next couple of two, three minutes is going to be specific to the Arizona contract, right? So whatever your contract is, whatever fill in the blank is available for your buyers as they're writing an offer, just add this instead, you know, take away the portions that apply to this, which is only Arizona specific and add yours. So the next is, you know, do you want the earnest money to be applied to your closing costs or the down payment? Again, this is a conversation that you've already spoken about. There should be nothing on this email that is new to the buyers, like the buyers being like, what the fuck is this? So next is down payment, the, re the remaining loan amount, close of escrow date, what the property conveys, you know, appliances, or did, did they like the TV, whatever it is there. The financing type, will you take possession upon closing? Who's going to pay for the appraisal, the seller concessions, how much we're asking for. And I, I just write down like specifics so that way the buyers know exactly what seller concessions mean because not everyone knows that. Only real estate agents know what the fuck that means. So I, I always, whenever there might be a question, I try to answer it in this email. So it's how much are we asking the seller to pay for your closing costs? Title company, due diligence period. It's standard in Arizona for 10 days. Again, this is explained beforehand where I'm like, if you want to get all the inspections, then maybe we should get 12 days. But if you only plan on getting just, you know, for the VA loan, it's mandatory that in, in Arizona, you have to have the pest. You don't even need a general. You need a pest. <laughs> but if so, if you want to do just pest and just a general home inspection, then we might we may only need five days. You know, like how many ways can we clean up this offer to get it accepted by the sellers? Home warranty. And if you are asking for the home warranty, are you asking the seller to pay for it 100% or split it 50-50, et cetera? Additional clause addendum. This is, again, stated in the attachment of email number two and email number three. This is that PDF, the bottom portion of my, my buyer PDF that I give to all buyers that literally gives you strategies on how to make your offer stand out. So it's the appraisal gap. It's the appraisal waiver. It's the accept, ten, accept it today, 10,000 above. Otherwise, if you're going to wait to accept it tomorrow, the price goes down 10K, shit like that, that I, we're, we're like always getting our offers accepted. Even as it's, you know, it is still swinging a little bit more toward a buyer's market though. Additional terms and conditions. So anything like that, like maybe like the, the money will go hard day five. The money will go hard as soon as X, Y, Z happens. How many days are we giving the sellers to respond to our offer? and inspections that you want to schedule. This last part is not part of the contract, but it's it tells my TC because my TC is the one who schedules all the inspections. And so then scrolling down, that's everything that we of what we need for the offer. Scrolling down, like in every single email that I have, I have the way ahead. Because always, 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 if you do not have a way ahead, they're going to ask, what's next? Okay, so what happens next? And I got so tired of hearing that. I mean, I actually only really heard it twice, but I was like, I don't want to answer this again. I want them to know what is next. I want them to know the next step before they even have the question. That's my goal. 
If you are looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. My reality is if my buyers are asking me questions, I didn't do enough upfront. So, and sellers too. So the, the, so the way ahead, email this filled out completely, reply all because my TC is CC'd. And on my end, when they reply all, I make sure that their shit is correct. Like the address, the purchase price, that they didn't change anything of what we already spoke about over the phone or over Zoom. And then I kind of, I text my, or I WhatsApp my TC and I'm like, good to go. Or hold on, let me fix something. But that way, as soon as it's good to go, Laura, my TC, can just draft it up and send it. Then next up in the way ahead, I have tell your lender the address of the property of what we're offering and how much. Again, this is again, because they should already know this. Number three is sign the offer. Four, I will present it to the listing agent and let them know it's in their inbox. Five, the listing, sorry, the lender will call the listing agent and put in a good word, say that you're, you know, already pre-approved or pre-qualified or already completely underwritten. And then number six, Bolo, be on the lookout for uh, my email, which says we are under contract. And then again, the only attachment on this one is the buyer client PDF. That's going to be, that's going to remain an attachment on this email for the buyers throughout the whole transaction. Because always I want them to have this, this PDF to answer questions too, because when they do have specific questions, I can say, I sent it in the email, refer back to the email if there are any other questions. And I, and I, whenever they do have a question like that, I kind of like say it super nicely. I'm like, oh yeah. So this was like totally answered in my, like the third video of that PDF. Did you get a chance to open that yet? And they're like, oh no. Okay. Well, totally cool. That video goes over everything. So watch that email, watch that video first. And if you have any other questions, dude, call me again and I'm here for it. And they're usually okay with that. Actually, they're always okay with that. They're never like, no, I want you to answer it right now. (laughs) So, yeah. Okay, my notes. First of all, I think that the 10,000, the offer where it's like 10,000 today and it changes tomorrow, I have never heard of that and I've never done that. And that's fucking super smart. Like super duper smart. So, fuck yeah. That. And then I also, I love your like little bits of leverage that, because people don't think of how long everything takes. Like, this is something that I'm going to actually implement a bunch of these into my buyer process because, you know, I'm like, oh, fuck buyers. (laughs) But (laughs) it's not so bad if you have like the buyer is the one who's telling the lender, the lender is calling the listing agent on their behalf, the TC is drafting. So you have a lot of like little tiny pieces that other people are doing that takes the weight off of you. And it, I know that listeners are like, oh my God, that's so many things that you're having other people do. But the thing is, it's, you might be thinking that now, if you don't have a lot of clients, if you have a lot of clients, it becomes more and more necessary to have all of these other little pieces integrated into a system that other than your shoulders, because if you have one, fuck yeah, you can do all of the things, but if you have 10, you just can't. And that's why people hate working with buyers is because it's a lot of a lot of work, but not so much if you have systems and processes for your leverage. So yeah. Yay. And it's like all about talking to, first of all, finding a good TC and a good backup. The backup is always hard to find, but as soon as you get into a groove and that's where in case you haven't listened to Shelby's episode on how to hire a TC, listen to that one. That one's money. Cause having those consistent check-ins where like, where I check in regularly with with my TC. I'm like, hey, what am I doing that's actually in your lane? Totally. Or what am I not doing that I think is in your lane, but really isn't fucking my lane? Please tell me. And so it's a, those are those are my two top questions that I'm always asking. What am I expecting of you that really like you're you should tell me that it's fucking my job. So just getting on the same page. And if something is in my lane but I actually don't want it, how much more can I pay you to do that? You know, like as yeah. long as it's legal, of course. So that's why like she's she pretty much drafted this offer or drafted this email. And 
Now on the back end, as soon as we go to place an offer, I will text Laura or my TC knows to always have the bullets, like pretty much take this offer, make it a bullet version when she's lit, when she's emailing the listing agent, because I don't email a listing agent. I, I don't do that. Laura does, or the TC does. <laughs> so what I will do, I've already spoken over the phone to the listing agent. I've already established a relationship. They know it's coming. They know to be on the lookout for my TC. So at a minimum, when my TC sends this, she can, she condenses this to maybe like four or five bullet points, whatever highlights, whatever gotchas. I do not want the listing agent to see what the fuck you're only offering 700. If we accept it today, like you probably should have highlighted that in the offer, like anything that's a gotcha like that. I have it as a bullet point. Yeah. And, and not even just the gotchas, but sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have opinions yeah, on this, but especially the gotchas. <laughs> but especially okay, the gotchas. Go, yeah. Go. Well, on I mean, because I work with buyers a lot my first year, but then as the team grew, I obviously worked with primary listings, and so I've done a lot of listings. And from listing properties, especially in the height of the market, when you have multiple offers. But regardless, even if you don't have multiple offers, it does not matter. Your protocol for submitting an offer from the perspective as a, of a buyer's agent can make or break whether or not you're your client's offer is accepted. I know that sounds fucking crazy, but like if two offers are pretty much the same and one comes in where all of the attachments are separately attached and labeled clearly so I know what the attachments are as opposed to those people who just download all at once and attach without with the pre-generated fucking the numbers that. and letters yeah oh my god and then the in within the email the bullets just like you talked about of everything that's key information then if they are nice and they have a signature block and look like a fucking professional oh my god absolutely you've just proven to me that you can clearly communicate that you understand what is important you are here to work on a teamwork type of thing, as opposed to here's my fucking pile of shit, you figure it out. I don't want to work with someone like that. And so, and that's something too that you'll learn over time. I know it sounds crazy. Listing agents have an insane amount of power in communicating with their clients, like a good relationship with your seller because, and, and it's always their decision. You have to be really careful. You don't want to steer and all of those things, but they will absolutely be like, you know, what do you think? And if you say, well, I, you know, the offer is just, 100% 100% yours, but this one came clear, cl- concise, followed up, you know, great. Whereas this one was a fucking hot piece of garbage. Do you think that that will impact and some level, even if it's just slight? The answer is yes. So just fucking don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> yeah. No, one. I, I love that you said that. So yeah, at a bare minimum, the bu- this is a bullet point to from the TC CCing me to the listing agent or listing agents. and. That's at a minimum. Usually if we're competing against other offers or there's something else to say there, then we will add that, you know, Hey, it's anything like literally anything. If I've had a good relationship in the past or, or they have worked with my lender in the past, like we are adding that to the, to the email. So excited to work with you. We are working with Guild Mortgage. We know that you have a good relationship with them. Like they will not be following through because of financing. The lender's going to be calling you in a bit. Kindly confirm receipt. So. Yeah, that's that's it. As far as like buyer email number three, this one, it's very, very not that much work for me, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> so and then as soon as this happens behind the scenes, so the TC is drafting up the offer. She's waiting on the signatures. It's not on me to follow up with the buyers to make sure that they do sign. If Laura, if the TC notices that the buyers aren't signing, then of course, that's when I follow up. But really, like that's on that's on them. And in the mean, in the meanwhile, we have already spoken to the, to the lender. I have already spoken to the listing agent and just all the parties are coming together. As soon as we place an offer, then my TC will shoot me a text saying, you know, your CC on the email offer has been submitted. Now we're just waiting on their receipt and life is freaking good. It's easy. This part is easy. And then also behind the scenes, I am then telling the buyers to, of course, just going over what kind of inspections they want. Again, you know, we have roof available. We have plumbing available. We have sewer scope available. If you want that X, Y, Z, giving them the list of everything. Sometimes they say, yep, we want all seven. And then we do all seven. Right now, what I do is being that I'm selling homes without even being in Tucson, I am paying for an agent on my community to be at the inspection because in Arizona, an agent has to be at the inspection for the entirety 
not all states do that, but yes, it will take like a good five, six hours. So I pay my agents to be there. And then at that point, I start telling them, talking to them about home warranty if they choose, if they wanted to buy their own and insurance. So I give them a couple of people to reach out to, you know, here are some recommended people. Usually my clients just go with USAA because it's a bundle thing. They already have it. A lot of them are military already. So that's what's happening kind of not in this email behind the scenes between me and my clients and me and my crew. Then as they know, we usually have a 48 hour response that we put in our emails that we put in our offer for them to respond within 48 hours. So I tell them, Hey, I'll reach back out in 48 hours as soon as we hear something. And then, which leads us to hopefully buyer email number four, which is the congratulations email. We're under contract. Here's what to expect now. And maybe that's where I will wrap this, this episode up is that's what, you know, that's what I do in my email client facing. I've told you what I do behind the scenes, me and my TC, me and the lender, me and my agents, my TC will coordinate all of the inspections. And being that I'm not in Arizona, I pretty much just say first available. And then I ask who is available to sit during the inspections. And yeah, do you th- did I not cover s- something, anything, Shelby? Mm, I don't know. I think you got it. <laughs> Man. I think you nailed it. Yep. Yep. Next email will be buyer email number four, which is step by step of congratulations, we're under contract. Now we get to work. So that's where I'll start it off at the next episode. Again, if you want my, I only shared my, my screen for my email, copy and paste it. But if you want to just have all of it, reach out to me, Allie, the agent. I didn't even share my screen of the, my checklist that I have like in sync, right? I have like my checklist on the left side, my canned emails on the right side. So if you want them both, reach out to me, Allie, the agent, reach out to Shelby, the Shelby show. We're here for it. We're given. We love you. Be a bro and share this show.